The animal in you flips in bed all night, fighting the waves. Blue, silvery ribbons pass. Safe in your locket, oaring toward dawn. Sailor's delight, Turkish delight. What can replace a cry? Overhead, cormorant, eagle, osprey, buzzard, and the little one ripping the end of a red tail. Below, you fish. All right. Welcome to another episode of Poets in Montana, and today we have Sean Gant with us. So welcome, Sean. Thanks. Thank you for that poem. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, we, we've known each other a long time, and uh, you, uh, you know, I, I, in your bio type stuff, I noticed that you are an old Montana girl. Mm -hmm. Clancy? Clancy. Is that right? You That's grew up right. In Clancy. Mm -hmm. Helena Clancy. Right. Yep. Graduate from Helena High or whatever, somewhere No, there. Uh, Clancy's in Jefferson County. Right. So I went south 30 miles to high school. Oh, every okay. day oh, okay and the activity bus home after basketball and right. plays and right. all that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then and then you went to the University of Montana and studied poetry at some point yeah I got a BA from uh, University of South Dakota mm -hmm. in English and then uh, took a semester back east because I'd never been in cities mm -hmm. and then went to grad school here mm -hmm. in Missoula, uh, graduated in 84, right after um, my teacher Dick Hugo died. And um, then I just stayed. <laughs> yeah. I've been here ever since. Yeah. Long time. Yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. And it, we, we moved down here, I guess, in the late 90s, and, mm -hmm. and I encountered you uh, through uh, the first night, I think, or something like that. Oh, yeah. Maybe, uh, uh -huh. Or maybe the book festival. I don't know what it was, yeah. but somewhere in that yeah. in that time frame and discovered you as a poet mm -hmm. and then discovered uh, your son later on, too. Yeah, <laughs> my son, Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the farmer. Your yeah. farmer. Yeah, Max is a farmer. Yeah, now. his farm is Winter Kissed Farm in Stevensville, Montana. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> yeah, cool. they just... Uh, turn to winter farming, which is a, a needed, yeah. much needed market to fill. Yeah, yeah. And, and even more so into the future, I, I would guess. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, what else is going on? I know you're in, you, you teach, you're, you're mm -hmm. still working over at uh, Hellgate High School, right? Mm -hmm. You're the librarian. Yeah, I've, I've had a almost 40 year career teaching, which wow. is kind of crazy. So, I've taught for independent schools and administrated doing that, decided that was not for me. Right. Um, taught at the university, uh, like high school kids, the right. best. Right. Loyola, Hellgate for the last 17 years. Right. Um, but now I'm a librarian. I kind of switched from teaching English uh, and literature and writing to um, teaching in every subject. Yeah, exactly. Teaming up with all the other teachers. I, I always thought that, <clears throat> you know, because I, I, for a while I taught high school English also, and I always thought that that would be the transition I'd want to make would be to the library if I, mm. did, yeah, because it was like <clears throat> the paper overload of being an English teacher and whatnot. I, was, I was like thinking, oh my God, I've got to get, I can't do this. It's a lot of work, and yeah, I did it, it for a long time, but, uh, I like, I really like what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And part of it, and this is our, maybe our latest collaboration is Poetry Out Loud, you yes, know, for oh, the totally. state. Right. And you've coached kids reciting poetry for a long time. Yeah, since it started, actually. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and we've done it at Hellgate since it started, so. Exactly, you were the, te you were the English teacher at Hellgate. Yeah. Yeah. So we still do that, and we actually have a category in the school to pick poet laureates for Hellgate. Cool. The ones that uh, write their own poetry and recite right, it. Right. Uh, original poetry. Right. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, poetry's alive and well where good. I work. Good, good. I know they, were, they talked about making a, a spot for that in that whole program too at one point. And I know that 
that uh, at the national level, I think oh. they have an evening where student poets get to share their own work. They do, kind of thing, they right? do, yeah. Right. I got to go on that trip once with a, a yeah. student, and it was just amazing to sit in the, I think it was the George Washington University Auditorium for three days and just hear the best poet right. poetry right. in the world. Yeah, who, who, who was the? Do you remember who who you went with? The, yeah, the, Amber Gray Morning. Amber, that's and they right. they were just knocked out. Amber Gray Morning from Hellgate High School sounded so intimidating, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she's a teacher now in the Highline. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I just my my son. I I had a message from him the other day. Uh, uh, someone who was working in his lab ran into uh, Stella. Uh huh. I, Shannon. I, I'm assuming it's Stella Shannon uh -huh. uh, down in San Francisco and made reference to the Poetry Out Loud connection. You know? Yeah, that's so it's great. It's a great program. Yeah. yeah. And we had another champ um, trying to, I can see him playing his day. And he had this like baritone voice. He was very impressive. Um, yeah, I'm uh, dropping the ball here too. I mean, it's been 15 years or so. That's a uh -huh. lot of that's a lot of a lot of poets. Yeah, a lot, lot of, of kids. Poets. Yeah. Well, um, we better have another poem okay. of some kind, and then we'll okay get back to talking about other stuff. I'll read another one from this latest book of mine. Yeah, and then you can tell us all about that book. Okay. Um, this is a poem called Aloof. How the empty house unsettles me. Last spring's robin home, open, oval on the porch. I reach for the glass and cannot find it. I look again, I still cannot find it. I wait for you to come home. Then I wait for you to leave. Light looks still. A candle flame is solid. The air behind waves. These last days I've known the next will lead you away. There stands the glass. Nice. That, uh, I stole that last line from a country western song. There stands the there glass. There stands the glass. You know it? There stands the glass. I don't. Oh. Uh, what, what's the song? Do you know? It's, song? it's. I think it's called "There Stands the Glass." Ooh, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an obvious ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I do know that one. Yeah, yeah. this is a collaboration with um, my friend Linda Leslie, who's mm -hmm. a, a painter, and she does a lot of portraiture. Mm -hmm. I really love her palette. It's very dusky and dark, mm -hmm. and the book is called "Dark Matter." Uh, after the scientific phenomenon, right? Um, but it's mostly about that space between images, um, the written images, the written word, po mm -hmm, poetry, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, the visual art. So it's a sketchbook, um, and beautiful. It's came out I don't great. Know if we can hold it up and get any kind of a look at it or not, but. Um, I'll sh let's see. I love the the title poem. So it's got uh, my handwriting, the poems on acetate, and they overlay um, the paintings, and then You can also read the poem against uh, just plain paper and see them side by side. And then there are a lot of blank pages f to make your own sketches and cool. write your own poems and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. Thanks. Yeah. That was a COVID project. And that poem <clears throat> was that one of the poem was that one of the poems that you shared uh, on the uh, speaking of our paths crossing. <laughs> The Missoula, Montana Poetry World, <laughs> which is such a huge place. It's so huge. Uh, uh, the uh, Words Out West. Did you did you read? I that might poem? have. 
That yeah, we wrote the, together on that. That too. might have been one of the poems that was on uh, yeah. Jay Kettering's Words Out Rest, West yes. radio podcast. Yes. Yeah. And uh, We're plugging everyone today. Yeah. Many of these poems have published in different journals and things before we put them together. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, you have a, uh, you know, and I thought about that when I was listening to you read uh, and then referencing poetry out loud, but you, mm -hmm. you have a, you, you have a wonderful, uh, you're a good reader oh, of good. your poems, right? I mean, that's a, a good presenter. And uh, it was at the, it was at the uh, Words Out West uh, party, after party or whatever mm -hmm. that, that Jay <laughs> did for his end of his first year of that podcast. That uh, that I saw you uh, getting down with uh, your band. Oh yeah, <laughs> I really like to um, read poems. Uh, yeah, with with musicians too. I love collaboration. Right. I love that kind of cross pollinization that happens. Yeah. And I've been at several residencies where um, I learned it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Vermont Studio Center and some mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. and uh, there are always visual artists there, and they think so differently. Mm -hmm. And what we really have in common is the image, of course. Right. But just that uh, flexibility that musicians have mm -hmm. to even speak in um, lyrics, you right. know, right. back and forth, a dialogue of lines right. from right. songs. Right. So fun. So rich. Yeah, yeah. Musicians and, and poets I, I mm -hmm. would work really well together, I would think, you know. Mm -hmm. you, I would say, you know, there's some of it has to do with us delivering words, but a whole, a whole lot of the, the magic happens with those people that, yeah. are, you know, Kind of brings yeah, a different dimension yeah, to it. Exactly. You know. Same with same with painting. Um, like these poems uh, don't really caption each other. Mm -hmm. They create some kind of space in the middle for my mind to have meaning between the two. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I I really appreciate that kind of depth. Mm -hmm. Even you know even between two poets too. Mm -hmm. Because you already start at a place where you're speaking the same language, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and another aspect of this book that I mean, we were talking about earlier when I was glancing at it, because I had—I don't think that I had, I had experienced that particular book. You said it came out last year, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, is is the the overlay, and 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 how that plays on the white page behind it i mean just the yeah j just the whole thing is like a the yeah, shadow yeah it's a, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of stuff going on besides just the uh, the words and the art and hopefully there's room for um for you to write your own poems in here too yeah right yeah. do you do your own drawings mm -hmm. yep. well what else you got well th here's one uh that takes off from the Persephone myth mm -hmm. um, and uh, her husband, the guy <laughs> down down south. Um, oh, dear, yes. So if I stumble, it's because I'm having trouble with my own handwriting. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, we shrunk it a bit uh, to fit. Myth. What I remember about Persephone is that she persevered in hell, crunching pomegranates every day, seasoned with Hades' sweat, while she dug carrots from the roots up. Pulling one down to her lap, she saw Earth's blue sky through the plug hole, her mother's face unstoppered now. The sky called, come home, come home but it, it was just her father. Demeter's ivory breast filled the gap for Persephone to latch onto. P listened for cow bells or church bells to change the wasteland to garden green. But on that carrot day in winter's waste, Persephone, clothed in iron lace, locked, mud-clad, solid, racy, eyes flecked by worms, 
pulled free from her mother's gaze and the human race below her, untended, deep, fireman stoking coals one on one, roasting her seeds, hundreds of hundreds glow in a stove from melted bells, amber preserves for Persephone's wedding. Persephone, yeah. I was thinking Penelope when you first said Persephone. I'm not the most astute with my Greek mythology. But, well, uh, that's what always bothers <clears throat> me when people throw these things around, myths, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. like um, urban myths, and expect you to know what it is. Right. right. And I, I always have these little touchstones, and I kind of remember until the person talks me into it, or I can look up at my phone or something. And right. So uh, sometimes you can just fill in your own story. Right. <laughs> well, that's what poets do, right? Make up your own myth. Exactly. I think that's actually what happened with the original myth. Mm -hmm. It just got retold and retold and retold, like a memory changes sure, sure. as you tell it. Yeah. I mean, these are realizations we come to over time, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, now I get the whole... Uh, memory and uh, history thing because you're you're so certain about a memory that you've had mm -hmm. and then you talk to someone else who was there with you at the time and they've got a totally different memory. Or in the case of uh, Bill, my brother, mm -hmm. we remember things exactly the same, mm -hmm. which is we haven't... Did you reinforce each other's memory along the way? Or? I <laughs> don't know, but I'll say something and he goes, yes, and then this and... And it, 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 it flies in the face of a lot of people that say, oh, my siblings remember it from their point of view or whatever. Right. I think it doesn't mean it's any more true. No. Um, but it, it is maybe our family myth. We've told each other so often. And all the variations are probably good, good versions in a way, you know. I mean, it, because yeah. good that's or bad. just the way, it's a version. It's the way we work, right? Mm. And it's the way poetry works for sure. Yeah. Reinventing, you know, things. Associative. I recently had another experience like that in regard to a, a poem where, you know, people projecting their own memory because we, mm. we were people who knew each other, grew up together and mm. whatnot. So, you know, they had an entirely different memory and it's like, Wonderful, good. <laughs> Rich, Enjoy that. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Write a poem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't say yeah. wrong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because yeah. it's just our, exactly. our view. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, I guess, that uh, in, in regard to you that uh, I've known for a long time, and you just mentioned before we started this whole thing, you've written 20 plays at this mm -hmm. point in time. Mm -hmm. And you're busy with that this year, too. Yeah, I have three plays going up this year, which is really mind-blowing for me right. and for once I don't have to produce them. <laughs> I'm just really um, uh, kind of, I don't know how to describe the feeling. Did, were, were, great. You, were you kind of a, a, of a, of a drama uh, geek, freak back when you no, were younger? No, always a poet, but uh, sometimes I'd have longer idea, uh, mm -hmm. I, bigger ideas that wouldn't fit in a poem. Mm -hmm. You know, our thoughts and research and things when I would get interested in or um, in a subject or uh, personal experience or whatever. Right. And I, I, you just can't boil everything down. And mm. I'm not a fiction writer. Yeah. So uh, dialogue seems to be something I wake up with in my head. Right. And the latest play that I wrote is um, called Sports of Nature. Mm -hmm. And it's about three cell phones and an iPod and one human being. And it's the whole um, idea of the obsolescence of technology and of human beings and mm -hmm. the hybridation of them. Artificial intelligence. It's really creepy. Or artificial imagination, there you go. they're calling it now. Yeah. yeah, so that whole thing kind of, it's very interesting to me mm -hmm. and creepy. And so 
uh, yeah, I mean, I remember, yeah. I remember having that. My my one, my oldest son, Sean, is a, he's a scientist, and I remember having mm. a conversation years ago with him about you know the whole. I was, you know, afraid of artificial intelligence and all this this mm -hmm. stuff, and and losing my humanity and. And you know, and his response at that time, I remember he was you know uh, not far out of uh, teenagehood. But I mean, it's not that it's not a great response anyway. But it was well, it'd probably be the best thing that could happen to us because we're a bunch of goddamn animals, and that's the problem. <laughs> we just keep screwing up over and over again. Yeah. Haven't you read your mythology? Haven't you read your history? <laughs> you just keep screwing up over and over again because of sex, because of jealousy, because of greed, because of all the fucking yeah. shit that human beings do. Yeah. So, yeah. why not just let the computers take over? <laughs> mm. I, I'm still for the humans, yeah, as yeah, Elon too. Musk would say. Yeah. Not that I'm a big fan of his, but he did say that, did which he? is good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just I think there's I think it's a tool and people do get scared of it mm -hmm. and I get freaked out by it a little bit. Um, but if enough of us say it's still a tool and the ethics get behind it, uh, we might we might survive it. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> part of the, part of the whole. Uh, uh, Fear-based end on the on the human aspect of it, the animal aspect of mm. it is, is that uh, the possibilities of an Armageddon, given all the oh, you yeah. know, the drama that we see right now and everything you know, and, and climate change and and so then maybe artificial intelligence is all that will survive. It's a lot. The human race. It's you know? a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe if it is our tool, it will help us survive. Yeah. So let's, that's my let's hope. That's my latest play. Um, I have another one in Anaconda at the end of this month. Cool. And um, that's a wedding play, and it takes place in the ballroom of a hotel. So I'm, that's great. All the audience are the guests. And, oh, cool. Um, it's a, it's a, a farce. romantic comedy? It's a farce, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's about <clears throat> two people who've been married three times before, and this time it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insanity. Um, and then uh, the third one is in the fall, and that's about having visitors in the summer in your lake cabin during forest fire season, and you can't escape them. So that's something a lot of There's people can relate poem. to. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. So those are productions this year. Yeah. Nice. You got stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, is there? Uh, is there anything in uh, this little book, Whisk, Lyric, and Logic, which is uh, a book that I do have a copy of, but you're going to give me that one, you said, which yeah. is nice. I can, Thanks. If I find my other copy in my stuff, I can pass it on to someone else. Yeah. I, um, I did this book with Sheila Miles, who's also a visual artist, mm -hmm. um, and it's a collection, again, of a lot of poems that were in already in uh, online zines or, um, I should read this one, or um, journals and, right, and published whatnot. Um, and this one is from my friend, uh, Michelle, uh, because she doesn't like serious poems. Mm -hmm. She likes funny poems. Right. Um, when I was in the uh, a checkout stand one time, you know, you see all the tabloids and stuff, right. and there's always like Bat Boy, and there's right. I've been abducted by aliens. Right. So, right. Um, th this is after a book about alien abduction uh, called Communion. The pineapple people came yesterday and told me to write a book about aliens. I told them it wouldn't work. I squished one of their heads by mistake. And the juice ran down my fingers and into the ice machine. The cubes are great for drinks and seem to enhance the IQs of anyone who eats them. The pineapple people visited for a second time, insisting I not call them pineapple people. I called over to the tallest one, the one with a twist tie in his hair. I said, what am I supposed to call you? Zucchini people? Cantaloupe people? Get on with it, he said. So I wrote it down for them, and they're coming tomorrow to check this. 
So this mm -hmm. book was um, Sheila and I sitting in my garden, and I would just sort of read a poem over and over and over, and she would sketch. Yeah. And then um, when she stopped drawing, I'd stop talking. Huh. And then sometimes we would keep it, sometimes not. Right. And we've done a, a couple other chapbooks together, too. One is um, called Chap Book, and it's about, it's uh, cowgirl poems. Okay. And then she's got the most hilarious line drawings of horses and that are laughing. I remember and that stuff. book, I think. And then um, yeah. it was handsome. It was a little art Yeah, project. it was like all, you only had like a num certain number of copies because yeah. they were all handmade. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. And then uh, we also did another one. Um, we would wake up in the morning, she at her house and I at my house at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then we would just spill the first thing, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Robert Bly mm -hmm. exercise. And we got a book out of that too. So, what would you call that? Uh, 5 a.m. drawings or, and, and <laughs> Poetry, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. just what it is. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but her, she, her sense of humor lends itself to line drawings. They almost look like cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, it's, it's funny that you say that because it wasn't that long ago. Well, I know when it was. I told you I have been moving, right? And yeah. we've gone through these moving processes. And the, la the first one, or the one here six months ago, was after I'd been someplace forever. And so <laughs> I had all this crap to pack up and go through. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found was, uh, it was like a, I used it as a bookmark, I guess. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I, I pulled it out and I looked at it. It was a square of paper about this big. And it was a drawing by Sheila Miles, which I, I obviously am not going to get rid of because she's quite the accomplished artist at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was a, uh, a a drawing or a sketch that she did listening to a poem mm -hmm. that I had read at some reading somewhere. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, and and it was, because the poem was not uh, a comical poem, <laughs> most of mine aren't, which people usually want, is that, could you ever write a funny poem? Oh, but You but, have a few. <laughs> but, but this one was not, and it was about a, a woman who had been murdered, and, and uh, or I say murdered, but mysteriously drown uh, in a situation that shouldn't, she shouldn't have drowned. And so uh -huh. s murder was the thing that came into my mind and a whole lot of other people around the situation. Mm -hmm. And it was never uh, framed that way or solved. But anyway, so I, I had to write a poem about this. It was a great mystery uh -huh. and it was very graphic. And uh, she was a very strong person. Yeah. So uh, I wrote this thing and then and I, and I, she, Sheila gives uh -huh. me this card. And it's, you know, it's, uh, th this woman is kind of uh, leaned over in a line drawing, mm -hmm. you know, like in this position. And then there are these birds, like crows, like ravens, kind of on top of her. And it was <laughs> uh -huh. like, oh, my God. It was kind of comical, uh -huh. you know. It was like uh, cartoonish almost. But could be taken seriously. Oh, well. Like, it, it, it. she had one in this chapbook. Um, and she's got a woman pushing a bicycle up a hill while three men watch, you know, and the, it, the, it's so funny to me, you yeah, know, yeah. her comments. Yeah. Um, when you say that about the mysterious death, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, to me that's Ophelia. Mm -hmm. Ophelia supposedly drowned and she was deranged and suicide and everything. Right. But there's a part in Hamlet where Gertrude describes her death and what she looks like and how she fell in and everything mm -hmm. to a T. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, teaching Hamlet, if she knows that much about that, she was probably there. Mm -hmm. And if she was there, why didn't she save her? Mm -hmm. And so I did write this play. Uh, uh, it's a cowgirl Hamlet. Uh, where Ophelia is the main character, yeah. and Gertrude is the, or Gertie, <laughs> is the um, the villain. The villain. Yeah. yeah, because there is that. Oh yeah. Well, what totally. really happened? I know that that's literature. None of that happened, but it does happen to people. 
Right. You know, where yeah. where their murders or suicides or whatever happens to them, disappearances are never solved. Right. How do you write about that? That's Yeah, yeah. Well, and and this uh You have to send me that poem. I will. Yeah. It's it's uh and, and it was a uh, uh the woman the woman who died uh, was a rather outspoken uh, lesbian woman, and <clears throat> and there was in, and there was property ownership. Uh, those kinds of things were kind of involved, mm -hmm. and 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 there was just a. And this was uh, over twenty years ago now, so uh, you know twenty five plus years ago. So it's like it, uh, it it was it was in a, it was in a place, you know. It wasn't in the the heart of uh, of of of, the, of a liberal pocket like Missoula, mm -hmm. and and so there was a, not a welcome wagon for people, uh, uh, <coughs> lesbian people or queer people in general to mm -hmm. uh, be outing about and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, that was part of the suspicion. Uh, and, and then hmm. part of the suspicion was also had to do with, you know, maybe property rights and money and issues in, in that regard. But uh, anyway, so I, I just made up my own story because there was no story, like you say. You know, when, when mm -hmm. you don't know anything, for sure, you make up your own myth tell your own story the way you want it to be, or mm. not want it to be, but think it was in your poem, or what your poem decides it is, by mm. the time it gets to the end, you know? Yeah. 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 So. yeah, I'm not a kind of person that gets the last line first. Yeah, no, no. Sometimes I, <clears throat> I'll write something and then reverse it. Right. Well, I mean, and this one kind of, uh, you kind of had a, a, a plot line that was, not a plot line, but at least the the formula, the death was there. You you know mm -hmm. that that was going to happen because mm -hmm. they didn't start out that way. It started out as kind of a portrait, right, mm -hmm. of a person, and and the kind of person and, and what mm -hmm. they were doing and whatnot. And then it winds up uh, having this uh, situation that they find this person in, and then and then you know. So anyway, that's and uh, then add crow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that just kind of came from you know a lot of times we'll and try to end on some kind of an image or something, you mm -hmm. know, and, and which was more back mm -hmm. to nature because she was a woman who was of the land and of, of nature to a great extent. And so mm -hmm. you, you try to land on something like that because you're a poet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, that's, I think, that's, I think <laughs> that's where the birds came from for her, you know, uh -huh. on, in the drawing. Maybe. I have a bird poem. Yeah, let's have a bird poem. Okay. You can't have too many bird poems. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was going to read this one, but with our conversation, I will. Because I, I, actually, I won't. I did read it in Words Out West. I know well, I what, whatever you want to share with us, let's have another okay. poem. Uh, no, I'll read it. My dad liked this. I just lost my dad a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And so now when I think of or when I read it, I think of him, right. which is so great. The Wax Wings Party. The Wax Wings feed each other in the maple. One takes a nip of fur worm, plants it in its mate's mouth, dives into the cherry tree's drippings. Spring water from a spigot spills over the birdbath rim and up dip. A sparrow scares 12 wax wings from the cherry, kicking the water from their ears. They ignore the neighbor's barking dog and two laconic teens walking the alley, staring straight ahead. A white cat lurks in the trellis. What little candle dip trimmed, drip trimmed them coating their tail feathers lemon. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I know that poem. I remember that poem. I've heard it more than once. Well, not just birds, but image. Is yeah, there. yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's why my dad liked it. He, right. he and my mom, my mom's like, 
I like Heidi Dill. She yeah. likes rhyming poems. Right. She knows where she's at and what's mm -hmm. coming next. Right. Um, so I don't satisfy her very much. Yeah, but there's a lot of music in your poems. You definitely, you know, you pay attention to sound in your poems and you pick up. It's one of our tools, rhymes. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it appealing. So here's Dark Matter. The moon got me out of bed this morning, bright through black branches outside. I can't sleep. I came from a blameless time. Sinking in, oiling out, cherubs and winding clothes. I don't want that for the moon. We are one, naked, alone, together, poor stone. Hanging there, every eye on earth has seen you bare one time or another. Every blind painter has dipped into you. Every boat goes home watching you move. Prove before you sink out of sight that light is a whole body in my bed, curling, and I can close my eyes again Sphere, penumbra, penumbra, sorry, <laughs> penumbra through full white branches, counting out quilt, craters, dust. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Part, and part of what? <clears throat> Part, you know, part of what I like about when, when you read your work is that you do give us a chance to process image. You go slow. And I know that's distracting for some people. Sometimes people will ask me, why do you read like that? And mm. it's like, well, I, I mean, sometimes conversations, a poem demands you to, to speak like you would normally speak mm -hmm. in a conversation. But if you're, if you're reading a poem that's got so many images littered through it, you it's need dense. to take a little bit of time mm -hmm. or to hear it out loud, you know. I mean, you're going to take time, I think, when you're reading it by yourself on the page. Of course, not everybody maybe reads to themselves out loud, but I do, mm -hmm. and because mm -hmm. uh, you want to hear the words, mm -hmm. yeah. And make sure they're working. Yeah. I think um, I really appreciate when poets give me a little bit of an introduction, because mm -hmm. um, poems are really dense and they're short. And so you only have a little bit of time to make meaning of it. Right. And if somebody at least rolls out a little carpet, it doesn't have to be red, but right. you know, <laughs> right. from an on-ramp for me, that really helps too. Yeah, I maybe mean, especially when you're like in a reading situation. You're, right. You're getting bombarded, you know, <laughs> one after the oh other. Oh my God. <laughs> and then you're, you just get so, um, Saturated, you can't yeah. really think. Yeah. No, and you, so you, so you do. I mean, I find myself unable to really process everything in a reading that I go to because yeah. half the time I'll find myself, you know, falling in love with a poem about a stanza in, and then it'll start making my own poem in the middle of their <laughs> poem. You know what I mean? Your, yeah. your mind will go, yeah, and then try to come back and pay attention. Oh, that's cool, yeah. though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well. What else? I don't know. Let me you feel like do another one. sharing with us. These are all have a certain tone. They're kind of dark, I guess. Dark matter. Yeah. Um, here's one. I had an image standing naked and all around me, the detritus of my life. I was in the kind of pain you have when the horse lifts it fo its foot from yours and the blood comes back. Reminds you of the possibility you may lose it. When the nakedness dissolved, I found a color no one had named yet since it only existed in one eye, mine. All around me was the detritus of color, the leftover scrapings, interior paints, a softly prepped canvas, muffling the sound of blood in my foot. Nice. 
So I'm not even really sure that poem hangs together yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it feels just a little loosey-goosey, but one, one way that Linda and I connected was that I love all that language of visual art. Mm -hmm. You know, and just the idea of a canvas and how many meanings that word has. And mm -hmm. yeah, um, and this poem we really connected on, but I'm not sure why or, you know. Yeah, I, I'm not, you know, the, uh, the, the thing that, of course, the, 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 the startling, wonderful image in the beginning of the horse stepping on the foot and, and, and then the, the immediate aftermath of the, the blood coming back and the mind's fear that charges behind that or mm -hmm. wonder. And then, then you move into the color mm -hmm. exploration in the poem and then you come back to that, that again in the end. There is a, I understand what you're saying because there is a, a major shift, mm -hmm. but you know, given your relationship, uh, it kind of makes sense the way that, that she may have been fascinated by the shift in the midst of the poem. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. projecting. I have no, no idea. No, no, thank you, because I, I don't, I haven't unlocked it yet. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like that. I used to have a boss who would stand outside the door of my classroom oh. and listen to me teach as yeah. my, as part of my evaluation. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. And it felt a little creepy. Yeah. after yeah. <laughs> knowing. Yeah. Um, but he would do this, and one time he said, you know, I was listening to you teach today, and I don't know what you did, and I don't know how you did it, but I knew how to do what you were explaining when you were, fin when you were finished. Yeah. And I thought, that is just the way my mind works. Mm -hmm. And w especially when I'm bored, I just start. Mm -hmm making it up <laughs> and finding yeah. my way through. But some poems, you must know this, they just kind of fall apart before they even gel. Or they, Some fall apart before they begin, I yeah. think, in and a way. And probably it's just like, good. It's just kind of, that well, I mean, I, but, you know, I mean, I'm not, um, sometimes, oh, I don't know what you think, but I mean, sometimes I, I think that it's just best to, let failures be themselves. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe That's they're a, a failure to me. To maybe they're a failure to me, but maybe they're <laughs> not a failure to someone else. I'm always. Haven't you ever had the experience of sending poems somewhere, thinking that you know those this two, is the best those thing I've two, ever written. those two nuggets in there will blow their mind, and uh, and then I'll just throw these other in there because they said I could send five, and you know, why uh -huh. not, because we're rolling the dice, and they take two of the others, one of them you didn't even really like or think that it was a good poem, mm. and the ones that you thought were killers, mm -hmm. they didn't even, they just sent those back to you immediately. Yeah, or, or you so strategize, you never know. this is this kind of journal, this is ki this kind of thing, this should yeah. come next in my my writing process or something and right you just never know what yeah. somebody else is going to mm -hmm. you know pick up on and that serendipity and, though keeps you writing um, what are you going to find next does it even matter to anybody doesn't really matter if it matters something to them yeah or how can you write <laughs> to an audience yeah, I, I, and I, some, some, something about it is you just can't stop anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. I, I, I was think <laughs> I was, what was that? I just, uh, before this, I was thinking about something else and it was, uh, oh, it was an old poem that flashed with me. One I remember, you know, writing like 50 years ago plus or whatever, and at the time when I did, when I was having the experience of writing this damn thing, I thought, this is a poem. I mean, mm -hmm. for the first time it like hit mm -hmm. me in awareness, like this mm -hmm. is a poem. I, I was like really so, a, and taken with myself for writing this poem. So when you read that again, do you, are you back in that, that emotional oh, yeah. space? Well, and, and, and in that literal space too, of course, uh -huh. you know, though I had that time shift thing. But, but I, I, I understood, I think at that moment, because of just the, oh, this is just so cool. I'm, I'm, this is, I can, I can do this, I or, it. or I'm, this is that I'm, I'll probably just gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this because I like to do it. And you keep that poem, don't you? 
You know, I, 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 I know I do have it. Yes, it's, it's mm -hmm. with other stuff in boxes at this point at my house. But it's... Uh, I, mean, yeah. I mean the rhythm of it or the something of that poem. You keep it. Yeah. It's yeah. in your writing then. It start, it's, the first line was passing the time, or I think maybe in the title even, passing the time in a green corduroy armchair. Well, Mark, <laughs> that's your rhythm. That is definitely exactly, your rhythm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, okay. So you're going to mm -hmm. just keep doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Entertain you, yourself. Once you find your form, yeah. you know, then right. any thoughts can, can right. work. Right. And then a little word play as long as it isn't too distracting, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Entertain I think yourself. that's probably what's going on here. It's a little too distracting. But there's a poem like that in here that I wrote really young. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think it's in here, and um, I've rewritten it and mm -hmm. ruined it and then oh, gone yeah. back mm -hmm. to I've it. I've done that many times. And I don't, I don't think I need to do it or even keep it, mm -hmm. but it it's, means something to you. It's something, yeah. I don't, yeah, I can't find it. It's not in here. Um, but I, I know exactly that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else in, in Whisk or anything you, you want to yeah, add or talk I'll, about or about uh, in poetry or whatever, your own well, world? or? I always want to talk about poetry, of course. But um, maybe I'll read one more from here. I really haven't revisited this book in a long time. Um, but I often, I'll end with it because it's a little long. Mm-hmm. I often get really interested in science. And one of my favorite things to do is go to a library and sort of um, browse through a, the science mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. because the, the vocabulary, the words in geology or mm -hmm. earth science or mm -hmm. biology or any of the little phylums of science, I don't know what you call them, categories have their own um, metaphors. Their mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. is so metaphoric to me. Mm -hmm. And the rhythms of them are... Yeah. And um, once I was going through uh, a library and I was, I picked up a book randomly on rare earth elements and it really got me thinking about that. Here's the um, little part at the beginning mm -hmm. of it, um, and it's called Rare Earth Elements. And those, those, well, it explains it. There are many cases of erroneous discoveries of chemical elements. Does this read like a textbook or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. When one is discovered, it is called a new earth or a rare earth because the raw material is difficult to find. So when I read that, I immediately thought, oh, that's just like language or mm -hmm. just like art or anything. Mm -hmm. Some mistakes are made because the elements are not sufficiently separated or because acting in compound, they take on the appearance of a new element. In the 20th century, nuclear technology required new materials. Mm -hmm. Scientists responded by creating their own rare earth elements. So now I'm scared, and I wouldn't say that I read this book, but I dipped in to it. Right. So there are sections. One, there are differences of opinion on where to place them on the periodic table. There are even different letters to signify their character. Like gods, they are anomalous, meaning anormal, paradoxical, meaning full of awe. This categorization of the ones we love, male, female, child, tree, truth. We discover a description of rocks which have always been here. We reproduce rare ruin. Two, it is my death. All clouds dance down low, 
going both ways along the spectrum. I cover so few fully verified and confirmed discoveries in 50 pages. It takes a book to delve into the wrong clues to sort out the truth. Three, sonorous, false beloveds, elements which duped us, not rare, not new, infidels vying to end a brutal war with brutality, cosmium, neocosmium, ostrium, demonium, demarium, ludium, incognitum, victorium. Four, the slightest impurity affects the position of lines characteristic of an element in the spectrum where I watch the ripe one sleeping under my breath held deep in the womb's heart, forbidden and pure. Five, the scientists thought, is there a limit to the number of undiscovered rare earths? If a rainbow can be divided into six colors, my God, I can make the ascent to heaven. But I will split things up later. I have agreed to pay attention. I study this nightly on my back in bed. Memorize the terms, atomic number, atomic mass, atomic weight. Six, most fascinating are the lenanthum, the hidden, the rare earth elements, stepchildren on the periodic tree. On the altar, the lilies blaze, the color of it, proliferate cloud cover before dawn. No room to stretch or sleep, a scientist compelled by the cold, doing what she can, holding her breath firmly in her hands. Seven, reach there, rest there. I think it is just sun setting, clouds stretched high, numb, curious. I can't forget that all through the night, the dead are helping. Noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and sling the rest past us, grasp the momentum resting itself with new earth, not an incoming ICBM, only a star in the night sky, sleep. Eight, halogens, fluorine, chlorine, manganese, bromine, technetium, iodine, rhenium, do what they can with the breath in my hands. If one man leads, the other must follow. How silly that is. This could go on, the end nowhere near completion. All the little tasks are done, and the day is so pretty it hurts. Nine, this long day where I feel the sun, I wish I were blind. I clip my ear to my mouth to hear the buds open, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, radium, Curie in the lab, the oxide awkward as a smell of losing your dignity, handing in your notice. Wine, trillium, whittling down the taste to metal. I'll miss it someday when I'm no longer able to speak, smelling death on my tongue. I remember wine. 10. The most stable isotopes are man-made. Neptunium, plutonium, curium, berkelium, californium, einsteininium, fermium, mendelevian, astatium. These distract me the whole day. 
Some of the earths are like wine. This is a common occurrence. The moisture stays on leaves longer every day. There's plenty left. There's plenty left. 11. I know the heart is out of me today. You have it. It's hard to come back into my own. I want to break a branch. I do it in my mind. Discovering the phenomenon of spinning, splitting, purely intuitive. Once known, knowledge notorious. 12. It is difficult to find an element with a life history more peculiar than that of element 61 in the periodic table. There was no reason to expect it existed at all until there was a hole in the table where it could fit. Petals move with bees, breathing through the eye. They are careful buds, revealing the invention of gods. Clouds move in and out slowly. Wow. That's a journey. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's wonderful language, and I, and I obviously see what you mean about falling into the, under the spell of scientific yeah. language. And, uh, and then in, in the other images that, you, that are incorporated into each section, it's a, it's a nice journey. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and the title was not Rare Earth. Rare Earth okay. Elements. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you first read that little epigram or whatever yeah. that's called in mm -hmm. the beginning, that, that uh, description, what hit me before I even got to the poem was, remember Rare Earth, right? The, the musical group Rare Earth. Oh, that's right. Rare yeah, Earth, yeah, yeah. the musical. And I mean, they yeah. were like such a variety of <laughs> in instruments and styles from from African mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. jazz through mm -hmm. through through pop and, and all these different instruments from now different I'll go around the, to them so, again. Exactly. So huh. I thought oh, this whole all this different uh. stuff to make this one new sort of experience of uh, of that that musical thing. I mean, that's probably what they where they got their. Uh, when I re heard that, I was probably that. yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, it was kind of a what thirties through fifties when those things were being yeah, created, I, discovered. I, I, most of them, yeah, probably by the end of the fifties, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, and then for a long period, I would in Clancy stand in front of my window at night wondering which one, if those were stars or ICBMs, you know, was the Cold War. Right. And um, <laughs> it was really terrifying. And, yes. um, and we're still kind of under that tyranny. Yeah, but you know, one of the things I, I, I've enjoyed about this, uh, this discussion today uh, with you is that uh, we haven't uh, gone down that rabbit hole, which I invariably go down almost every damn time. I just can't quite let go of the fact of, of, of the, uh, the fear-based world that we're living in right yeah. now. So anyway, yeah. we managed to avoid that one. We'll save that for another, another episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you got to take technology and science and those things head on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if we can do it with language, that's... Yeah. Great. It occurred to me that I would love to memorize that poem. I was always impressed by a poem that you have memorized with really wonderful sounds. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. The, the with the music stuff with my with the with the records. The, uh, the uh, is it the one? The, the you the, recited it one time when we were at a reading together or something, and it was it's just so fun. But I would like to. Memorize my own poems, maybe that would be fun. It it, it is. It takes a little bit of time to do it, but but once they stick, they're there. You can't get rid of them. Promise? It, 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 yeah, <laughs> it really are. It it's a, it, that's that's the fact we keep telling these kids in, in poetry yeah. out loud, right? That's the beauty of recitation. Yeah, uh, it, is is that memorization stays with you? You can you can entertain the crowd. You always have a poem. <laughs> Well, our, I, we're probably about uh, out of time here, so okay. Sean Gant, be looking for her plays, mm -hmm. and uh, thanks, Sean, for being here. Yeah, thanks for doing this series, Mark. Uh, it's been a pleasure. 
It's great. Join us next time. We'll have another poet in Montana. Bye. Yeah, lifetime filled.